This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com According to Minna Gashkenaz, there are 45 kinnas that are part of the liturgy of the kinnas service. Uh, through last night and this morning, there are a total of 45 kinnas, which is very telling. The Gemara tells us that Gedalia ben Achikam was nifter on the third day of Tishrei. And the third day of Tishrei is a fast day for the death of Gedalia ben Achikam, just like the tenth of Teves is a fast day for Churban Beis Hamikdash. And the Gemara tells us, Lilamedcha Sheshkula Misa Sadikim Kisreifas Beis Alekenu. This teaches us that the death of the righteous is the equivalency of the burning of the temple. Which means that an Adam, that a human, that a Yisrael, that a Jew, is literally supposed to be the house of rest for the Shechina. The Gemara tells us, Kol mi sheyesh baydas ki lubayna beis hamikdash biyamav. If somebody's mind is filled with the knowledge of Torah, if somebody's mind is filled with the true understanding of Torah, he himself is a beis hamikdash. So what does that mean if we don't have a Beis HaMikdash, if we have Chorben Beis HaMikdash? What that means is there's something not right with the Adam, there's something not right with us, like we learned in the Haftarah, Mikaf Regel Viad Roy Shein Boi Misoim. From head to foot, nothing is wholesome. And therefore we recite 45 Kinos Begematria Adam to indicate that it is we who are Becharbana. And as we say every year, the Torah writes, that is incumbent, that we have some degree of understanding of the kinos, the men, the women, the children need to understand the background and some of the phraseology of the kinos. But as we mentioned, that even if somebody is not really familiar with the message of the kinos, nevertheless, the words of kinos themselves contain tremendous kedusha. As we know, the kinos were written by great personalities, most notably Reb Lezer HaKalir, the Magen Avram brings down that when Rabbi Lezer HaKalir would compose many of his kinos, he would recite different shemos of Hashem. He would ascend to the heavens and he would confer with the Malachi Ashares as to the exact formula of how to write kinos. In fact, the Magen Avram reports that when Rabbi Lezer HaKalir composed the kinos, he was encircled by a heavenly fire. Who exactly is Rabbi Lezer HaKalir? It's a matter of great dispute, great uncertainty. We just learned in Chagiga, Daf Yud Gimel, Toysva says that Rabbi Lazar Kalir is none other than the son of the Rashbi. Shal Tzachivas Harajba identifies Rabbi Lazar HaKalir as the great Tana, and according to Abbas, perhaps the greatest of all the Tanoim, namely Rabbi Lazar Ben Arach. In any event, whoever wrote the Kina was certainly a great personality, and each word carries great significance. We're going to begin with Kinevav. We'll try to keep it a little shorter this year. Kinevav is the first kinna that we're going to recite this morning. It begins with the word Shavas. Shavas means everything came to a standstill. Everything stopped. Suddenly, unexpectedly, you see psychologically, a person is able to better equip himself to deal with tragedy if he has a premonition that the tragedy is coming so psychologically he could begin to absorb and digest what is taking place but when tragedy strikes suddenly it is very difficult for a human being to assimilate it. And that is what happened in the times of the Chorban. Not only that it occurred but Shabbos that it happened suddenly. Yes, the people were warned, they were warned, but they didn't really think it would come to be. They woke up in the morning, and lo and behold, the Beis Hamikdash was gone. I'll never forget as a young boy, I remember I was 12 years old, one week to my Bar Mitzvah, I remember it was Tisha B'Av. And the night before, I was in the shul. And the next morning, I walked to shul, and I turned to my father, and I asked my father, where is the shul? And I remember the Agudas Yisrael based Binyam in Ellen 29th, the Einenu, it wasn't there anymore. Shavas, suddenly, sudden tragedy. Even Yirmiyahu experienced the suddenness of the destruction. 
Hashem told Yirmiya go to Anasai to buy a field, so he goes to his uncle's house. And then he returns and suddenly the temple is gone and he realized the temple was gone. When that column of smoke which always ascended straight from the Mizbeach, he was not able to see off in the distance. If we take a look on the 13th line, the second line from the bottom, At the Euphrates River, her pious ones were mutilated. This refers to when the Jewish people were being exiled by Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar is exiling the well-known, Levi- well-known Leviim, and he turns to Leviim and he says, Shiru lanu mishir tziyayin, serenade me as I gloat over my victory. Sing to me some of the songs of Zion. And of course we know the Leviim went on and proceeded to bite off their thumbs, to mutilate their thumbs. And instead of telling Nebuchadnezzar that they would not play music for him, they said famously, Eich nashir ashir Hashem al Not, we won't play music for you, but instead, how can we play music for you? But amazingly, these Leviim, who bit off their thumbs, we would expect they were Moiser Nefesh, we would expect they mutilated their bodies for the service of Hashem, they were castigated and punished very severely. There's a toysis in Yevamis on Daf Pevav. That in the times of Ezra, everybody knows in the times of Ezra, Ezra said, Yidin, let's go back to Eretz Yisrael. And who came with him? Nobody. Nobody came. They said, we have in Bavel, we have our Williamsburg. We have our Flatbush, we have our Borough Park, we have our Cedarhurst, we have our Muncie. Who needs Eretz Yisrael? We have Torah and Babylon. Kimi Babylon teitzei soiro dvar Hashem mi neherda. And nobody went back. Except for the Zakanim. Because the Zakanim, 70 years earlier, they were in Yushalayim. But no one in the young generation went up. Why should we go up? We're comfortable where we are. So Ezra was furious at, at Kal Yisrael. So he gave the Leviim a knas. He penalized them. And he said, Leviim no longer get Meiser Rishon. Leviim never get Meiser Rishon. Who gets Meiser Rishon? From now on, the Kohanim get Meiser Rishon. So Toysus wants to know, there were no Leviim in the times of the Bayashani. Somebody had to play music. No, says Toysus. There was not one Levi in the times of Bayashini. Because the young people didn't go up and the old people didn't have fingers. They couldn't find one Levi to play music in the temple. Asks Rav Chaim Zaychik, is that right to the Levium? They bit off their thumbs for the service of Hashem and now they're being punished for not play for biting off their thumbs, they were Moiser Nefesh. They returned after 70 years. Why are they being penalized? Says Rav Chaim Zaychik, the Leviim made a fatal mistake. They thought that when they were exiled 70 years earlier, there's not a chance in the world they would ever come back. They were Miyayish. They gave up hope. They didn't think they would ever see the temple again. And a Yid never gives up hope. A Yid is never Miyayish. It doesn't matter how desperate, it doesn't matter how bleak, don't lose faith in the remote possibility, in the strong possibility, in the realistic possibility. Somebody's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
וחזון בן ברכי, הבלי גל גל חבוי, אני מעלה סביבה זרי עזר, נראה מי גל בכיר בן אמר לילה, אני ברי עמלי, ואז נפז רזי דה, אבל יוסף זכר, כל יוסי דה, אבל אל חי, תשיב לא הייתה יוסי דה, אבל זרזי היה היה יחסי דה, ואז אמר, מה סייר ילנידה, ואז עשי ומידה, אלא ציון זדו שאני מדונה, את זמור ראש, את ציון זדו עיני, צם צמנה ולמה, את זדו עיני, את זדו עיני, צמנה ולמה, מדונה, את צמנה ולמה, בימי בן דינה, את צמנה לקבוע דינו היה דגם, מרבד אדם הידי, ארמוני, יאה דמי לב היה חרימוני, גרוע סיוע שגילו אינו ידהים, סרמוני, כאלה להשמיע בערוך יהיה גרימוני, כל יאמר בעשר הרימוני, גרוע סמא בהם הרימוני, למרוח הבין לדור שמור איסו, כי רצנו אירום חמרו וזה יום עבר אז ביבו יאמר כמו רב תביע וחסר מכם כמי מורו, ראי ונגיד מי לא יאמרו, ראי עד אין הגיסה לי מי איך אמר מורו. אשי ואינו סיסו שימה לגוי ציוני, שפטר אומר זרזר לעד כי יוני, סוסי משורי, דבי ארדם ולהדי ואיני, שמעת לזמור סביך ולתת איני, שר ונות וחצר זרבי איני. חשוב מן הרעוני, כי תמך רק תמכי זוי בניך, לא תמכו לגוי עוז רצה זבניך, דרדו סם יועצי על צפוניך, תיתן להם ואם לא יסי בניניך, מזו שם כל זרם עצמו בניך, דבי יור עצמו בניך, דבי יוצר שגילנו נובי חמאס וחים ניהלנו. אל רחב וחב רגלנו, זר ירבוך ובסוף כבלנו, רמה בן העם רגלנו, זרד אמר יאלנו. איך רץ טוב יאבך לאבי בירדם ימונך ולזרד ובספין אבסום אשר בירדת לבחונך ובכן ביתינו זכר עדיין אמר יאלנו, איך רגעת מגר עצך לזוויית גאים גאולך ולזכר דליגה עשו לך דרך אשר דלגת לגאולך ובכן דיברנו זכר עדיין אמר יאלנו. איך רק דבי הגאוי נח לאדו ויראוי במה מעינך ולזכר דבי יוד ועסק 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 לא בסנח לי אדם אשר ימד על ללכו ככה, וכן לא אגנז אחד נאמר, אוי אלונו, איך המילה אל תביא מה יעשך, ומחס ביד מוין ומנעשך, ולא זכר דנשיא אז נאי צאז נאי אשר נוצא זונצואך, וכן אוי אינו זכר דנאמר, אוי אלונו, איך עושה אחת בשערך, לעשה ביד עשוי אף עם סעדך, ולא זכר דוי, אוי זה עדי אדוי משהו יתעד לעבודך, וכן אוי אינו זכר דנאמר, אוי אלונו, איך הבעת זבחתך, לבג ביד בריצים בליח, ולא זכרת. צר לעצמי צדק אשר צמד את צפוייך ובכן צעקנו זכר עדיין אמר יאלנו איך גרס וקריאה זכר אם נזיין גם גורך אבל זכר עד הרגש ריח אבי בסמל שור וציסו לרעייך ובכן רגג נזכר עדיין אמר יאלנו איך שאהבת משאהבך לשאל את ביד שדה משלימך אבל זכר עד התקם טל טל לישראל אשר תיקנת לסמימך ובכן טועננו זכר עדיין אמר יאלנו טענת לאש ורדמו יסכם עיים אמר ביום זה נשבינו פעמיים זוכי ביוסי בשבע יושב עצמי בשלים רוגנת מיד עד עד חוג שמוים פינו יוד, איך היה שרחב הצל עשה שור רוין, ודם עם רוין מפינוי סייר רוין, מנו משמרו יסום כהן ומנהי הרוין, כנים שר בייס בזמסור ואימו רוין, בוכי סב גמי חומש הסבור ומגן הר כהן מנו בימי ימי הכיפורים, ויעדו מנשחתו וברוכים כצבירים, ונעדו כציפור מגני ציפורים גול סמי ארצה קל ומקושטה, באב אין מסר עשו שמיתו, וירבע שבתו מושבתו, מיד יאו אפשטו משמר עצמו אפשט דדך, איך אל שמו כנפרץ כוס לוי גם יגנה גם זילו, יורד ואושבו מטילו, ונא מסילו כהן עיסא אלוהי. אוי אבי מה אוי ומה לי ומלך מי לחם, כי ולא עלי בר סורב לחם ורב אבו עצמו, ממים ומלחם כבוד לו שתי הלחם. מי בייס לחם היצא הדר אוי אם בכסף נחבוס, וסמורי איפה הראש החיפס, ונראה זנכבו מנוירו נחבוס, כפות שהוא בלחם מופס. נו כדו יוי פה זוכר זמן השונס, ונשמע ישיבו ויעתה נויסו מין לא יאמרו. לא נו, לא נו ורוי סובו ורוב ובקצובו לא בוקרני איל ברוכי חטא ואומר לה לא זה היה ולהיגה וזה דבר חוי זה היה אבל כן וכנו במרגיז זה היה ויצמו עיניה כפר עוזי על תומאס החניף עושה ובנעלה רב אחר ויונון אבק רק לקרוא ואין מזכר בחוי עני ארבל יודע אוי פור עשר בבייס בו ככלו יחי אהבתי כדור עמה בו כסא יש שסחי בו בני בו ויצא בחבל כבל כהן כבל כלמה כהן נו קינא כי יכיסו לי על כנא בגוי נו ולא יסום קינא ונודו מי קינא משמר עשה על כנא עולה למר מים צוף עזו חזו ואחר עשכי פס וחיזק מוס ארו פרס מנה ועשו מנה פס כהן צבא עשו מבור משמיע נלי סיטה אין ויקני ויבור אין ושיגו אין ופגר עלי אבוי נוי וגבו אבוין ונכב, כי הושבתי ענון מליאה, ונמנעתי מלצבתי, ומנהי ביוגו 
Shugav, Benosa, Kina Mishmaras, Yes, Sheva, Sila, Bira, Maria, Raya, Valenis, Galia, Kedas, Maria, Mary, 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 with Sogi, Mary, Mishmaras, Madia, Agavi, Hoshu, Hosh, Mary, Homanis, Veriko, Lai, Hervachanis, Verbe, Sitamis, Vasanis, Mitras, Tachnis, Yatsa, Yvonis, Persevania, Chile, Akilaha, Mina, the Hashkim, Shalai, Hoshba, no bris melach vein shem ula hurash melach tzadik v'adi nekidim maras we are rurai the seiba hurai the small ozi v'zimras kinim ala nechras of gazias nizras nizras korasu tzuri v'goliyar av konanti v'ayar v'arav v'chavaner adog b'marav rechol yarav machol arav reiki v'sarti konia v'sani avani akoli katzoyin la'tevach manuya v'na mechanuya migdal nunia shamu kinis hamti v'sachan av nizras das marm shvuya. Ushati Usham Varbuvia, Mayas Havia, not the base Havia, Shamuki, Nizamti Vitsahana, Sazamani Tahina Valenos, and Lirachim, Hanino, Mikurias Hana, Kifar Yuchana, Tavi Ras, Samuni Adomin, Vishos Shara, Shaymin, Vishvahar Yomin, of Avim Silnogin, Saint Salmin, Tavi Samriach, Vikoshki Tazri, Hadashat, my Sino Tavriach, Vrechni, Hoykin, and Kedam Toriach, Mishun Hotar, Shule, Hama, sorry. The most important kina that we recite on Tisha B'Av. If you could only say one kina, it's kina Yud Aleph. Because the recitation of this kina was ordained by none other than Yirmiya Hanavi himself. I saw last night in the Sefer Moyed L'Chol Chai of Reb Chaim Falaji that don't forget on Tisha B'Av not only to cry over the destruction of the Temple, but there are people in this world that are actually embodiments of the function and objective of the temple and as we mentioned shkula misas sadikim kisrefas beis aloikeinu the death of the righteous is the equivalency of the burning of the temple and Rabbi Chaim Falaji mentioned specific tzadikim that one needs to think about on Tisha B'av, most notably Yoshio HaMelech who the Kinnah expresses, there was no one greater than Yeshua HaMelech from the times of Moshe Rabbeinu. And there was no one greater after him. Who else do we need to think about? Zechariah Hanavi. Who killed Zechariah Hanavi? Klal Yisrael killed him. Where did they kill him? In the Beis HaMikdash. When did they kill him? On Shabbos, on Yom Kippur, he was not only a Navi, he was a Koyen. When did Hashem forgive us for that? Not yet. Hashem is still angry, Kiviachal, that we did this to him. Says Rav Chaim Falaji, when you mourn over the death of Tzadik, it may be. The Rebbein Shalom will finally say, okay, macholach, for what happened more than 2,000 years ago. We're talking about Bayis Rishon. Chana v'shiva boneha. But in this kina, we lament the death of Yoshiahu. And Yirmiya enacted and legislated that anyone who laments, that all the male singers and all the female singers Whenever they cry, whenever they meant, they must lament Yoshio HaMelech as well. As we mentioned, the death of Yoshio was so tragic because there was never a tshuva movement like there was in the times of Yoshiahu. As the Kino says on the sixth line, Gamachomalche Yisrael Asher Kamu Ligdar, Laikam Kamayo Mimais Avigdar, who is Avigdar? Avigdar is Moshe Abenu. Moshe Rabbeinu had either seven names, according to the Gemara Megillah Daf Yud Gimel, or ten names. And Yoshua's father was the wicked Amoin. His grandfather was the wicked Menashe. Menashe was a very successful man. He was successful in establishing Avodah Zarah in every nook 
and cranny of Eretz Yisrael. Menashe ultimately did tshuva, but sometimes it was too late, it was too late for him. His son Amon continued his dissemination of Avodah Zarah, and Amon was assassinated. And how old was Yoshiahu when he became the king? He was eight years old. How old was the Belzarebbe when he took over? I believe he was a teenager. Yosh, what? Yoshio HaMelech was eight years old when he became the king of Israel. The Kino says on the third line, Ben Shmaina Shana Hachalid Roish Melechav. At age eight, he began to search for God. That's not what it means. It means in the eighth year of his reign, because a new Melech is considered a Nar Shanoilad. In the 18th year of the reign of Yoshiahu, something happened in Eretz Yisrael that would forever change the face of Eretz Yisrael. Yermiah's father. Who's Yermiah's father? Chilkiyahu. And Chilkiyahu begins to do the long overdue repairs on the Beis HaMikdash. And in the course of his discovery, he discovers a Sefer Torah. But not any ordinary Sefer Torah. The Sefer Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. In many of your in English kinos, it says that Menashe was so successful in disseminating Avodah Zarah that there was not one safer Torah in all of Israel. Mm-hmm. That is what we call apikarsos. It's not true. That's what the Christian Bible scholars hold. This is not what Yidin believe. What was significant was not that they found a safer Torah. Chas v'shalom Torah loy teshtachach b'Yisrael. There was never a year in Klal Yisrael that there were no sefer Torah. What was significant was not that a safer Torah was found, but which safer Torah was found, and that is the safer Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. And what was significant was where it was open to. It was open to the Toichacha, and the Toichacha read. God will carry out the king to a fire, foreign empire. And Yoshio reads this, and he's shaken, and he sees the Pasuk. Cursed is he who does not uphold the words of the Torah. And as Yushami says in Saita, Yoshio proclaimed, It is upon us to uphold the Torah. So he convened a nationwide assembly, and they made a covenant to keep the Torah with all their heart and all their soul. So Yoshio asked the people, do you still have idols? So they said yes, and Yoshio says, I don't believe you. You need to commit. The people said, we're committed. Yoshio says, I don't believe you. I'm coming to your house. So Yoshio sent detectives to every Jewish home to see, obviously, if they were filtering their internet and if they had other devices that perhaps would contaminate the Jewish home, but he was also searching for Avodah Zarah. So the Jews had a great system. You know the Sfarim shrank that you know you could hide certain things in? Well, they had this system where the Avodah Zarah was hidden behind the double doors, and the detectives came in, and they opened the doors, and the Avodah Zarah was hidden behind. And Yeshua naively felt that he had thoroughly eradicated Avodah Zarah from Klal Yisrael. Now, I want to share something with you, which is not a matter of uh, inspirational note, but it is a matter of great interest. And that is, based on recent archaeology, they have discovered that the story did not quite happen the way it's portrayed and the way we were taught. We were always taught, the Pasuk says in Devei Hayamim, that Paroi Nechai was Allah to battle against Yoshiahu and against the king of Assyria in the north east. So we always understood that to mean Paray Nechai was headed out to do battle with Assyria in the northeast. And that is not entirely true. In fact, that is not true at all. What is very interesting is that Yirmiyah, when he got message from Paray Nechai to allow Paray Nechai to travel, travel through Israel, did not allow Paray Nechai to travel through. Because Yoshio naively thought that the Jewish people had eradicated Avodah Zarah. In fact, Yoshio asked a Shaila. Who did he ask? He asked Choda Hanaviyah. But Yoshio made a big mistake. Because you can hide behind an excuse that you asked a Shaila because you need to know who to ask. 
And even though Chulda was a Neviah, she was not the one who the Yibam Shalom wanted her to ask. The Yibam Shalom wanted him to ask Yirmiya Hanavi, and Yirmiya Hanavi said, you need to let Paranachai travel through. And this is probably the most common mistake in Jewish life. I asked the Shaila. Who did you ask? And how did you ask? It's interesting, just on a side note, there's a Gemara in Hariyos. Gemara Hariyos says, let's say you hear a shear, and a Rav gives a Psaq Halacha, and you follow it, and the Rav was wrong, you're amazed, you're not allowed to follow a Psaq Halacha, you hear in a shear. The Gemara in Hariyos continues, Someone asked the Rav Shaila, you overheard and you followed that psak, and the psak was wrong, you're amazed. You're not allowed to follow a psak that you heard a Rav give someone else. If you go to a Rav and you ask a Shaila, I was just wondering what's the halach on this and this case, and you get a psak and the psak is wrong, you're amazed. You're not allowed to follow a psak when you ask a Rav and you say, I was just wondering. You need to ask. It's relevant to me right now. Can I do X, Y, and Z? Then you could rely on the Psaq. Halachos of asking Shaila. Can I ask someone, and then if I know someone is lenient, can I ask them that particular Shaila? No, it's actually Halacha and Shulchan Aruch. You're not allowed to do that. It's wrong to do that. You have to have a matter of consistency. So the fact that Yoshio HaMelech asked Chulda was considered shopping around. In any event, recent archaeology has shown that Pari Nechoi was not interested in doing battle with the king of Assyria. What Pari Nechoi was interested in doing was defending Assyria from Babylon. Assyria was the mightiest power in the Middle East in the times of Bayis Rishon, but now Babylon is ascending its power. And Babylon had recently conquered the city of Nineveh. And Assyria was reeling. And Parai Nechai was afraid of Babylon. So he figured if he would bolster Assyria, that would be a weaker Middle East power than a strong Babylon. So he was actually going through Israel not to attack Assyria, but to defend Assyria from, from Babylon. What's interesting is eight years earlier, Yoshua was also asked by the previous king of Egypt to travel through Israel. And he said yes. And it's a matter of uh, historical curiosity. Why did Yoshio say yes eight years earlier and eight years later he says no? And the answer probably is, is because eight years earlier he was not confident that the Jewish people had thoroughly eradicated Avodah Zarah. And therefore he could not be confident in the promise of the Toichacha that when Klai Yisrael was doing the will of God, no nation will travel through Israel even for peace. But now, eight years later, based on the Psaq of Chodah HaNaviyah, he was much more comfortable. And Yirmiya sent message to Yoshiyahu, you have no right to rely on Chodah. And Yoshio did not listen. And Paranachai marches right through Israel. And as is depicted in the, in the Kinnah, his archers begin to shoot at Yoshio HaMelech. And they pierce his body like a sieve with how many arrows? 300 arrows. And Yirmiya comes to run to hear the dying words of Yoshua Melch. In fact, a major question of one of the Achroinim, of the Rashash, on the Medrash is, Yirmiya Zekoyen, how could he scoop up the blood of Yoshua Melch? He can't be Metame to Yoshua Melch. And he wants to hear what will be the dying words of this great king, will he in the, in the, in the end of his life, so to speak, speak ill against God. And the Kino describes, and the Gemara and Taina says, the dying words of Yeshua HaMelech were tzaddik hu Hashem ki pihu marisi, the Lord is righteous for I have rebelled. Says the Gemara in Ma'id Katan, Yeshua HaMelech died b'seva taiva. Yeshua HaMelech died in a ripe old age, a happy death, a content death, a peaceful death. A peaceful death? I can't think of anyone who suffered a more grotesque death than being pierced like a sieve in 300 locations with blood dripping from him like a fountain. How could the Gemara Mayakatan say he died a peaceful death? Says the Gemara, he died a peaceful death. 
because he did not have to see the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. Torture is heaven compared to the Gehenna of witnessing the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. Even Yoshua HaMelech, who died a torturous death, is considered to have died in peace because he did not have to witness the destruction of the Temple. Kino Yudalaf. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mimino Domino Marshim Chem, Gigos, <laughs> Atilham, Achlam, Chem, Alati, Machem, Ayoha, Gambachios, and Sarasish, Gaviosi, Bibhoyos, Ayoha, Mazimi, Razas Dami, Tini, Ayusi, Sakhak, the Cholam, Yachum, and the Shasam Below Shimurim, Akim, the Hafen, Rashi, Hamar, Mizuyan, and Ramar, Mount, and Raymond, Sri, Gilal, Shacham, and them, Ganalab, and Azim, and Hatham, Sam, and Echam, and Kanko, Sibah, Risa, and Zang, and Sari, B, as late as the youngest, or Hatas, and Hatas, and Hatam, and Dilah, Bishi, because <laughs> Zahara <laughs> Hojamazan <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
יד מטר מושפל, עשת שעון מטר, שבתם כמעט מביט עד שבעינו שלם, שילם שלם וסיים ערב די משעיינים. תחת רבי סבי שלם טוב איזה עשר שם, אין אלא מלאים בסוף וחי, ואיבר כמו, תחת שלם גמור תגרס יאללה, 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 יאללה,
and clearly it was a miracle, why would, the, why would God perform this miracle? Why would the Rebbe Hashem make a miracle just to trick Titus into thinking that Titus killed Chas Vashem, the Rebbe Hashem? The Rebbe Hashem doesn't make miracles for nothing. Says so Rabbi Yishek this was not a miracle for Titus, this was a miracle for us. This was a lesson for us. This is a lesson to what role Tzion should play in our lives, to what role Yerushalayim should play in our lives. What is Beis HaMikdash to us? We say in the brachas on the Haftoyah, Rachim al Tzion kihi Beis Chayenu, that the Beis HaMikdash is the house of our life. It's the heart of Klal Yisrael. It's the life of Klal Yisrael. Without a Beis HaMikdash, a Jew should feel like they're dead, the Vilna Goin writes at the end of his commentary to the Tzafra Ditzniusa that now in the Golos, without a Beis Hamikdash, it's not that we're dead. It's not only that we're buried. It's not only that our flesh has rot. Even our very bones have decomposed, says the Gra. That's how we should view ourselves without a Beis Hamikdash. The Rebbein Hashem made a miracle that blood came out of the Paroiches so that a Jew recognizes that without a Beis HaMikdash we have suffered national cardiac arrest. It's like a dagger to the heart. It's like our heart is bleeding. This was the miracle of Zechor Asher Osot Tzar Bifnim Kina Tazayin. Zechor <laughs> אני מזרחי בוי אוי אורצי רבי צער רבי צער רבי צער כך ניסו בכר רבי חלו אש וזה זוי נוצר איך ניסו אי נכבו ואיש עבוד ומחית ובזוי רבי צער אש ויאמר בבי סייש מרואים שלח אש נב שנת דבר נגוי ציקלי שרס וסמר בו נשאר בום לי שרס ואינו נמק יש כמי שרס פלי מצא תשעים ושלושה כלי שרס נשים גשר וגיבו ארץ וגג הבייס נעלו בהחרץ Sam <laughs> Bi <laughs> Thank you.
One of the most dramatic highlights of the Tishvav service is Kina Chafalif, Arze Levanoin, depicting the murder of the Asar Haruge Malchus. The ten martyrs, the ten great Tanoim, who were murdered by the Romans. Now, this Kina is not meant as a historical account because many of the Tanoim did not even live together at the same time. In fact, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel did not even live at the same time as the other eight. Now in Yom Kippur we read another kina, another piyot that depicts the death of the Asar Haruge Malchus. Namely, we read the Ela Ezkara. So on Yom Kippur we understand why we read Ela Ezkara, because the Gemara tells us in Ma'id Katan, Amar Rabbi Ami, Lamanismu Chamisas Miriam, Leparshas Paraduma, Loimerlach, Misasan Shal Tzadikim Mechaparas. The death of the righteous atone. So Yom Kippur is a day of atonement. So we read about the atonement we gain through the death of the righteous. And certainly during this tekufa of Klal Yisrael. Klal Yisrael lost so many great people. Navaminska Rebbe, Zechazak Levracha. One of the great Paiskim in France was Nifter during the coronavirus. And this is all included in Misa Sadiq and Mechaperes. The death of the righteous atones for Klal Yisrael. But why do we read about the martyrs, the ten martyrs on Tisha B'Av? Today is not a day of Kapara. Today is a day of Avelos. But the answer is, as we mentioned before, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah says, on Daf Yerches, Shkula Misa Sadikim Kisrefas Beis Aleikeinu. The death of the righteous is the equivalency of the burning of the temple. And therefore today we mourn a tragedy on par with the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. The Kina begins, Arze Halavanoin Adire Atoira, Cedars of Lebanon, Mighty Warriors of Toira, Bale Tracen, the Mishnah of Gemara, the Shield Bearers, in the learning of Mishnayis, in the learning of Gemara, Giboire Kayach, Mighty Warriors, Tamide Chachamim are mighty personalities. To the extent where the Gemara says in Tainis, called Tamil Chacham, Sheinoi Kosha, Ke Barzel, Einoi Tamil Chacham. That it's part of the mentality of the Torah. The Torah gives someone an iron will. The Gemara says, Haid Surba Mirabonan de Rosach. If you see a young Torah scholar that gets angry, Oiraisa Hu de Martiachle, the Torah is burning in him, so of course he'll get angry. The Torah transforms the personality and makes somebody a gibar. But the Kino says, Amaleha bitahara. It's they toil in it in purity. We all know many smart people who, when it comes to learning, are not as successful. Because Torah is not dependent on intellectual acumen, it requires Yerashamayim and it requires Tahara. The Kino goes on to depict how they brought Rabbi Shimon Gamliel and Rabbi Shmuel Kayin Gadol. And they each begged the executioner, please kill me first so I don't have to bear to see the death of my associate, of my colleague. And the executioner was so overwhelmed that he cast lots and on the tenth line, the Kino says, Yadu goyro mi risha lacher berura, they cast lots, who will be first to the sword? Kinefoil goyral al Rav Shimon Pashat Savora Yubacha Kinigzera Gzera. When the lot fell out on Rav Shimon, he stretched out his neck and he cried when the decree was issued. Rav Shimon Gamliel was the Nasi. He was the great grandson of Hillel. He was the direct descendant of David Amelech. 
says the Mishnah Brewer in the name of the Sefer Chasidim, that when Rabbi Shem Gamliel was taken out to be killed, he asked Rabbi, Shem, Rabbi Shmuel, Kain God, oh my dear brother, I am not a criminal, I am not a sinner. Why am I being punished in such a harsh way? And Rabbi Shmuel Kain Gadol thought for a moment and he said, My dear brother Rabbi Shimon, may, many, maybe one time when you were lecturing publicly, you felt in your heart some personal pleasure from the Torah and you benefited from the Torah. Is that possible? And Reb Shimon replied, Achi ni chamtani, my brother, you consoled me. My brother, you consoled me. And on the bottom line, Mizera Aroin, Shoal Bivakosha, Livkois Aben Agivira, the scion of Aaron, Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol asked to cry on the son of royalty, not al Roisha, Yunusanea, Kubaisav, he took the severed head of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and he put it on his lap. Menorah HaTahira, pure lamp. Sameinov, Aleinov, he put his eyes on the holy eyes of Rabbi Shmuel on Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Upiv al piv, biava gemura, in total complete love. Anav Yamar, he cried out, Peh HaMizgaber Batoira, such a mouth, that prevailed in Taira, Pisa im Niknesa Allah, Misa Meshuna, the Chamura. How suddenly was it decreed this terrible death? Now it was Rabbi Shmuel Kayin Gadol's turn, and it was issued that they should skin his head. Tsiva lahavshid es roishai. They commanded to skin the head of Rabbi Yishmael Kain Gadol, the Sar Haschira, with a sharp razor, and with his great self discipline, and with his inner strength, Rabbi Yishmael Kain Gadol did not utter a sound. Come, Be'oirai! Amru Lanavshech, Shriv and Avoira. They were going to preserve his flesh. Rasha Poishet Eisi Gyalim Koim Tfilin, despite his equanimity, despite his calmness and his faith in God at this fateful moment. When the Rasha reached the place on his head of the Makoim Tfilin, and Rabbi Shmuel Koim Gadol realized he would never again be able to wear the Tfilin. Mitzvah Bara Tsak Tsakov in his Daza Ilam. He let out a cry and the world shuddered. Vieret Sespaira. Our Rosh Hashiva, Rav Henech Libu, would point out that the personal pain of Rabbi Shmuel Kain Gadol, he was able to tolerate, he was able to suffer, he was able to be soivel, but the thought of never again being able to wear the tefillin was too painful to bear. Then they brought Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was the greatest Chacham of the age. Rabbi Akiva was an old man. He was 120 years old. Oiker Harim. Rabbi Akiva's penetrating analysis could uproot mountains. V'toychanan zuba zuba svara and grind them together. V'sarku es v'sarai b'masrik shal barzal hishtabra They raked his flesh with iron combs to break him. Yatsasa nishmasai b'echad Rabbi Akiva's soul departed with the word echad Ubas kol amra And Abbas kol cried out Ashrecha Rabbi Akiva Fortunate are you, Rabbi Akiva, Gufach Tar B'chomine Tahara. And the Gemara in Brachis tells us that Abbas called, that cried out, Ashrecha, Rabbi Akiva, Sha'ata Mezuman, L'chaye Ha'ilam Haba. Kina Chafalef Arze Halvanain.
Azel of Anoin, Hadirei Atayra, Balei Tracen, Bemishno Begamara, Giboire Kaya, Hamala Betara, Tomam Nishmach, Benosh Sagvura, Tomam Nishmach, Benosh Sagvura, Hinam, Kedarshe Aruge Malchus, Azara, Vialela Nivachia, Veni Negra, Zais Vazachi, Azak Bemara, Chemnas Yisrael, Kliya Koydash, Nesim Atara, Tahirei Lev Kedosh, Nesu, Bemisam Meshuna, Bemisam Amura, Yadu Garo Mirishan Achar Barura, Gnval Garo Ram Shemel, Mpashat Sarra, Yubach Ekenik Zura, Gnik Gezeira, Rabin Shemel, Chazara, Egmai, Lark, Abin Avesh, Natsura, Mizar Ara, In Shab, Lava, Koshal, Lav Kois, Albein Hagavira, not our Roisha, you know, Sanela Kuvaisa, Minoira Taira, Samina Valley, Nova Pina, Baby Avagumura, Nami Yama Pamas Gabra Bataira, Pizam Nikasala, Misamashima, Hamura, Tiba Absha, Roisha, Visara, Sahira, Kiam Bioira, Yamula Napsha, Shivan Ava, Hira, Raja, Bezere, Sigilam, come to fill in Mitzas Bara, Tsat, Yoka, Minizas, Oilam Yats, Spira, Rami Akra, Vivi, Srabi Akiba, Ikarama, Taikan, and Zabizubis Mara. The circus was served with Master Shabazza Lish, Dabra Yotzan Ishmasa, Biakhravas, Kal Amra, Azra, Rabbi Akiva, Gufach Tar, Bahomine Tar, Ben Baba Rabbi Dahra, Vivi Bishabin Leve as Hara, Nerag Ben Shivim Shana, Bide Arura, Yoshib Sanis, or Yarnaki, Bahasim Lach, Telamara, Rabbi Hanina Ben Trad, Yon Akhara, Makil Kihila, Is the Sea, Yon Shara, Yoshib Doresh. Zevertora <laughs> Okay, we're going to put Kina Chav Beis together with uh, Kina Chav Hei. According to the Arts Rule Kinos, Kina Chav Hei is the first Kina recited on Tishvav that speaks about a tragedy unrelated to the Chorbin. But Rav Salavechik disagrees and he argues that in fact it is Kina Chav Beis, which is the first Kina commemorating a tragedy after the Chorbin. And Rav Salavechik sees in this Kina that it references the first crusade of the year Tatnu. It's worthwhile to be familiar with the expression in history, Tatnu. Tatnu is the Hebrew date of 1096 for the First Crusade. Accordingly, says Rav Salavechik, there is a line in the Kina which is better understood in the context of the Crusades. Um, if you have the art scroll, Svard, it's 264, Ashkenaz, 258. It's a very interesting line where it says as follows, Miyafli Nazirus Umiyarich Nadarim. Who will interpret for us the intricacies of the Nazarite vows and who will now arrange the complex laws of oaths? In other words, what the Kinnah seems to be describing is with this tragedy, who will be able to explain to us Masechta Nazir and Masechta Nedarim? The intent of the Python is to allude to the fact that there are two Masechtas in Shas that do not have authentic commentary of Rashi. Now, although the printed Gemara has a commentary printed on the side that says Rashi, we all know Nidarim and Azir is not Rashi. 
In fact, Nedarim and Azir are two of the most difficult Masechtas. The reason being is because we don't have Rashi. Because of the massacres of spires and mains, then perhaps the Kina is saying we would have had a Gadol who would have been able to do to Nazir and Adarim what Rashi did to the other Masechtas. But the German Baletoises were all killed out. And there was no one to rival the commentary of Rashi. And therefore until today, Miyafli Nazirus, when it comes to Masechta Nazir, if you want to learn it well, you need to go to Brisk. When it comes to Masechta Nadarim, it's very hard to learn because we don't have Rashi. And this would be more understandable in the context of the massacre of the First Crusade. Now, Kina Chafhei. Kina Chafhei discusses the downfall and the real devastation of the com- uh, community of worms. I was Zoycha to be in worms, uh, what was it, last summer, this time, exactly one year ago. And I was in Rashi Shul. And I had my own mishap over there. Someone stole my hat in Rashi Shul. Does anyone out there listening know where my hat is? I'll like it back. But Rashi had a shul in Worms. And the community of Worms suffered at the hands of the Crusades far worse than any other community. In fact, the Sma, one of the classic commentaries on Shulchan Aruch, Sefer Meir Senayim, the author of the Drisha, the author of the Prisha, he, as recorded in the Seder Adorois, in his entry for the year 1620, the reason why the Kehillah of Armaiza suffered worse than any other Kehillah in Klal Yisrael. And that is, Vermaiza was established as one of the earliest communities in Europe. It was established by exiles of Eretz Yisrael, of Yushalayim. And as we mentioned before, Ezra sent word to the Jews to return on the times of the second Beis HaMikdash. Come with us, help us rebuild Yushalayim, help us rebuild Eretz Yisrael. And many Jews from other communities did go. Jews from Spires, Jews from Mainz, Jews from other communities of Germany. However, the Jews of Worms were very complacent and they said, you stay where you are in the great Jerusalem and we will continue to stay where we are in our Jerusalem. Says the Sma, the complacency of Worms was their undoing. When God looked down from heaven and He saw the Crusaders were willing to give up the comforts of their home, the comforts of their residence, the comforts of their hometown, to be able to redeem the holy city of Jerusalem and the Jews would not give up the comforts of their hometown, it created a great accusation in heaven and that is why the community of worms suffered a much greater fate than any community in the entire European continent. Kina Chaf Beis and Kina Chaf He. Oridvisikh <laughs> 
Raj Velikroitz Shadra, Vie Lima, Debruba Amira, Lazachino, the Gadachem, La Tirna, Grivchem, Kaila, the Aktara, Finiske, Machem, La Irat, Suname, Nikol, the Aluma, Arid, the Sikh, the Ahima, the Konhi, Arima, Oz, the Skimo Gadoy, the Muktanim, the Kava, the Avadin, Shechin, Moinim, as it came to Shinranim, Emo, Yutrila, Nidoinim, Via to the Cross of Mazifanim, and Ergua, Moinim, Moinim, and Asarbu Pedarim, and Parshtoinim. Vehefisualabesriabonim, <laughs> Toira, Toira, Chigri Sak, Vispal, Shiba, Forim, Evel Yochid, Asiloch, Mispat, Tamurim, Al Tovsim, Shaitai, Chuvarse, Machmurim, Malachai, Vachoivlai, Vimai Madirim, Orchem, Aroche, Miashe, Hadurim, Mifan, Chetz, Funai, Homagale, Mistorim, Mi Katze, Big Voice, Mi Satis, Beharam, Mi Fore Kavoyo, Mi Sore, Shivarim, Mi Aflin, Ziros, Mi Arach, Nedor, Mi Sadid, Mama Kaya Vikatu Ikarumi, Ochamel Kham Te, Ryoshava Shorem, Klimel Kham Avdu, Benafu Giboyrim, Asher Maskilim Karakia Zoyrim, Mimucha Shalom Nahu Yisharm, Oiva, Avoy Shoid, Vashever Lenoi Sorem, Limadiva Snevish Vachaval, and Matsirim, Lachioni Nam, Samov Slois Sidorim, Erevoy Mimitain Savar Mubaika, Mitsabim, Gala Oyrim, Imari Nima Yashahimo Sharim, Yichut Shikla, Kherve Ima Mach, Mikhadar, and Mosai Taudroya, Kosa Sorim, Kane le sayra oskhasha sura fu azarim kala wa pro wa kara wa alexarim kasim sabukhim igdilu amadurim halila sasaba kadan kol yitsurim tim kaim da man nishba kama mamugarim yishayda ni men kasurim am shave vashaluni mumururim riha ma isam ba takharima kanam hagbi hagbi ave harima arid basikh bi ahima wa kanhi arima Kina Khafemi Tain Roshima Yemen Mikar Noiz Lai Vevko Kyumoisai Vilay as Khale Tapa Voilalai Visheshai Kholai Vyatamanu Avoy Oivala Ivachin Bokhai Bekharav Harev Abisavi Alama de no Kinaflu Bekharev Vidamaya Tidma ini Vyokali Sude Voichim Avaka Imi More Leva Hanavoichim Avasula is Hayafa is Vilodim Harakim Sifrayim Nikrochim La Tevaknim Shachim Admu at seven of Ninim, Sapirim and Noivrim, Kamaitid Hutsais Nidashim Nishlachim, Zurudami Goralama in Milakarev, Abbe Sisra Velama de Nakinaflu Bechore, Vesirani Dima Velila Vianuda, Vlav Hivalachgar Sak, Ekra La Spida, Mipazi Karavazav Hamuda, Panima Kabuda, Kvoid Kokli Hamda, Risia Kura Shulav Gamuda, Toyrav and Mikra Mishma Goda, Anu Kanu Zois Hagida, a Sarah Talmud Valahim Dala, Yamakame, and Yoshev Horaif, a Mason Savi Alamadina Kinaflu Bechara, the Afapa Yuzumayim, Demale Agira, Bakoni Marale Haruge Ashpira, Bashini Bishmainovi, Margoya, Ukra Mergoya, Nechla Fule Avira, Nergo Bachre, Hemen Vishishe Hadora, Nesuya, Hanav Shamishimu Bemoira, Ayyhud Shema Muchad Yihadu Shem Bigvura. Ki boyre khaya khay se devaro ila mahara wa khaya neva luma nikvu kula masara wa mari goni vatsbi yala lakhbira ki la sa khay da shari gosma yam bizakha kal var maiza ba khuna ba khura goni ya azna ki etara ta mayim ki chu she mam yu kha be mahra bi asm shla shi ba khay da zivla tara wa khay da shli shi the kriyas halal shara shum nafsham bi ava ki shura himalayam wa khi yala lakhashra Kavulei ches haroisham liyatra v'yal adire kahal magen sa hadura v'nesharm kahal me arois l'skabra shlimu nafsham yichud shem anoira v'alim zaka shever esh o'ara al shnei mikdash ha'yisoidim kayim u'ara v'yal chor m'ismad mikdash ha'yu midrushay ha'toira b'chadash ha'shishu b'shishi noiz v'adav in me'ira ha'chadash ha'nevach liyogin b'tzara v'yay matan da'sibar to this ashra v'yay m'nesi nasig m'aychim oz chazra al sola Lamarlam Kaimidaira, Im take of an art take of Adorsh of a Khaikral, Im Davishana, Pishan Kamaiva Ira, Simonal Lavavka, Mr. Marla Kashi Kishkular, Grasma Savala Sapra, 
Kinachafchas, <laughs> Tosamadali <laughs> You know, Lamed Aleph, we say together. Eish tu kad bekir bi v'haloisi halibi Tseisi mi mitzrayim Kine ma'ira liman askira V'tseisi mi rushalayim Az yashir ma'ishen shir la'yinashen Tseisi mi mitzrayim by a coin near me of an anahi, near it says, You shall lie him. They see his coin on the shah and he are not. It says, Me misraim. Bahamas el shah no like an honor. It says, Me shall lie him. Kaleya Ramu Vichaima Kamu Tsaisi Mi Mitzrayim Zidahimim Shatafu Vya Roshi Tsafu Bitsaisi Mi Rushalayim 
תגען שמיים מצור יזוף מים פייסים ממצרים לנו ומרוירים מים אמורים ופייסים מירושלים השכים הרב סביבו יסחו ירד פייסים ממצרים קוירי על אבל על נר אוי זבוב אל בצייסים ירושלים ומרי כבוד אדוני נקי אשר יחל לספון בצייסים ממצרים וזהו חבר'ה תושב לטבח נדושה בצייסים ירושלים זבח ומנחה ושמן המשחה בצייסים ממצרים סגול עשה לקוחה כצוין לתוכה לצייסים מירושלים חגים ושבוס אוי סומוי פסמי אוי סויס לצייסים ממצרים תיינס ואבל ורדוי פהבל בצייסים מירושלים תויבו אוי הולם לי ארבעות וגולם בצייסים ממצרים עולה איש מאלם ומחנוי שרלם בסייסי מירושלים יוי ואלו שמיתה וארץ שקטה בסייסי ממצרים מכור לצמיסוס מכר סמוסוס בסייסי מירושלים כבוי רס ואורון מיאב נזי קורון צייסי ממצרים, יבני הקלע, וכלוך להבעלה, בצייסי מירושלים. רבים ירוינים ושבים זקנים, בצייסי ממצרים, נויקסים ומוינים ומוכרים. כהנים וצייסים מירושלים, מוישה יראינו ויערון ינחינו, וצייסים ממצרים, נבוכדנצר ואדר יונוס קייזר, וצייסים מירושלים, נערוך מלחמה ואדוי נוי שמה, וצייסים ממצרים, רחק ממנו והנה איננו בסייסי מירושלים, סיסרי פרויכס וסדרי מערכס, בסייסי ממצרים, חימה ניתכס ויולי סייבכס, בסייסי מירושלים, אוי לא זבחם וישי ניחויכם, בסייסי ממצרים, וחרם מדוכרם, בני ציון היקרם, בסייסי מירושלים. פערים מגבויס וחבוי נגבויס בצייסים ממצרים שריקויס וסרויס וקיילויס וזבויס בצייסים מירושלים צאץ עזוב והמשל ורהב בצייסים ממצרים הושלך בצייסים מירושלים קדושה ונבואה וכבוד אדוני נירא בצייסים ממצרים נגלה ומירא ורוח התומה בצייסים מירושלים רינה וישועה וחצוי שרוי סטרועה בצייסים ממצרים זקה סוי לו ונקה סחולו בצייסים מירושלים שולחן ומנוירה וחל אלו כתיירה בצייסים ממצרים אלו וסייע אלו וסייע ואפס אלו מהצבע בצייסים מירושלים סעסיין ושמחה תודה וסעודה אוכלי החמדה בצייסים ממצרים סעסיין ושמחה ונס יגוי מהנחה ושובי לירושלים Kino Lamed Vav. Kino Lamed Vav begins the last group of kinos known as the Tzioin Kinos. 
All of these kinos, with the exception of kinam emalef, which kinam emalef will be the last kino that we will be doing, they're all concerned with the notion that Eretz Yisrael is the chosen land of God and the center of the universe. So I was doing some research about various kavarim in Eretz Yisrael, always wanting to go to the kever of Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, the author of this kinah. And I see on the map, sure enough, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi is buried in the north. So I asked around, is there any, anybody ever go to the kinah of Rabbi Yehuda Halevi? I called different tour guides, nobody had ever been there. So I look carefully at the map, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi is buried in a city called Kabul which is an Arab city, and that would explain why nobody ever went there. But upon further research, I, I saw that along with Rabbi Yudha Levi is buried the Ibn Ezra, and Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gabirol, and a Novi, Micha Hanavi. So I figured, somebody has to go to the cover of Rabbi Yudha Levi. So I called somebody up, Ephraim Schwartz, in Carmiel, who said that the police chief of the region lives in Carmel, and he's going to put us in touch with the Palestinian police chief, and maybe we could go. So sure enough, we had Palestinian police escort to take us to the kever of Rabbi Huda Levi. I was there right before Corona. So you have nothing better to do this afternoon. Check it out on Torah anytime. The kever of Rabbi Huda Alevi, it's Mamish lo Yeuman ki Yisupar, of where it is. It's right near an Arab cemetery. It's in the middle of an Arab village. There are no Jews who live in the city. And we were escorted with three police cars. Uh, it's really unbelievable. Rabbi Huda Alevi was the greatest, or one of the greatest of all the Paitanim. In fact, the Rajva and Shuva Taf Yurches writes, Rabbi Huda Alevi is the greatest of all the Paitanim. Rabbi Yudha Alevi was one of the Rishonim, he was born in Toledo in the year 1080, Talmud of the Rif, Talmud of the Rimagash. And Rabbi Yudha Alevi became a master of literary style in Hebrew and Arabic. Rabbi Yudha Alevi was the greatest lover of Eretz Yisrael. He is the one who penned the famous words, Libi b'mizrach v'ani b'saif marav, My heart is in the east while I am stranded in the far west. While there have been many pilgrims who have traveled to Eretz Yisrael, no one expressed their love with more eloquence and more beauty than Rabbi Yudha Levi. The Rambam, who mentions Eretz Yisrael in the Maranavuchim, only mentions Eretz Yisrael one time in the entire Maranavuchim. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar does not mention Eretz Yisrael even one time in the whole Chavis Habavos. Rabbi the Ramban, who was a great lover of Eretz Yisrael, and in fact gave up everything to live there, only speaks about Eretz Yisrael in halachic sense. But Rabbi Yehuda Levi describes the land of Israel in great literary style. Page 328, in Nosach Ashkenaz, Nosach 334, Miyasa li kinafayim v'archik nedoid. Who shall make me wings so that I may wander far away? Onid libisri levavi. I would cause my, shard, my shattered heart to wander Bain b'soyroyach, among your shattered ruins. What does Rabbi Yudha Levi mean, if only God would make me wings? What does he want wings for? I believe Rabbi Yudha Levi is echoing the tefillah of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu in the Medrash on this week's parsha, when God says to Moshe, go up to the mountain and see Eretz Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu says, please let me go in. God says, no, Moshe says, let me go in as a wild animal. I will be a Gilgal of a wild animal who eats grass just to drink the water of the land. The Rebbein Shalom says in this week's parasha, Rav Lach, you can't do it. Amar lefan of Rebbein Shalom ve'imlav hinei oisoi ba'olam hazeh ka'oif. At least let me be like a bird that flies through Eretz Yisrael. And even that, the Rebbein Shalom would not give him the privilege. Rav Moshe Feinstein asks on the Gemara Saita, on Daf Yudalid, the Gemara says, Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to enter Eretz Yisrael to Mekayim mitzvahis hatzluyos ba'aretz. Frech Rav Moshe, so what good would it be to enter as a bird? A bird cannot be Mekayim in the mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Yisrael. What good would it bring Moshe Rabbeinu to enter as a bird? Says Rav Moshe, from here we learn 
that merely just one time to breathe in the air of Eretz Yisrael is worthwhile as Kedai. What is the benefit of breathing in the air of Eretz Yisrael? Page 336. I would fall on my face on your soil. The Eretzav, I would intensely cherish your stones, and favor your dust. Even the stones of Eretz Yisrael are endowed with admirable qualities. Moshe in this week's parasha is Mespalel Eberana. Eberana, please allow me to cross in, says the Paneach Raza. The Yardin is 50 amos wide. Moshe Rabbeinu was davening, Ebrana, let me go in 51 amos, at least let me step one amma in Eretz Yisrael. What gives the dirt of Eretz Yisrael Kedusha? Says none other than Rav Salavechik, from this kino we learn a Yesoid Nifla. Why is the dirt of Eretz Yisrael Kadosh? Says Rabbi Yehuda Alevi on the fourth line, the reason why the dirt of Eretz Yisrael is holy is because G'dayle Yisrael are buried in it. Aroin HaKoyen Avram Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Yaakov, they're buried in that dirt and it endows and infuses the earth with great Kedusha. In fact, we find this principle enunciated by the Navi Nehemiah. When Nehemiah comes to the king of Persia and the king of Persia sees Nehemiah as sullen, is upset, and the king of Persia says to Nehemiah, what a chutzpah it is for you to come before the king in such a depressed state of mind. And Nehemiah says, how can I not be depressed when the city where my forefathers are buried lay in ruin? Nehemiah didn't say when the place of the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed. He said when the city where all the Gedal Yisrael are buried is in ruin. Merely breathing in the air of Eretz Yisrael invigorates the soul with life-giving properties. Rabbi Yudha Levi explains in the Kuzari, just as the body requires oxygen, the neshama requires the air of Eretz Yisrael to have vitality. That if the soul does not breathe in the air of Eretz Yisrael, the soul asphyxiates. Says the Chesed Li Avram, the great-grandfather of the Chida, Avir Eretz Yisrael, hu tahar hamucham l'kdusha l'avodas Hashem. In fact, why is it called Avira Da'ara? Avira is an, is an acronym. Avir Hashem, the light of God. The light of God, the Or Hashem, is in the, in the air of Eretz Yisrael. Kina, Lamid Vav, Siyah in Halay Sishali. Sing <laughs> Shamash Hina Shuna Lach, the Oitzech Vasak Lamo Shari Shachak Sharaich, Hueda in Elevad Hoyam Oirech, Bain Sarvo Shemesh Bukhavim Oirayich, Evchar Lenafshi Lishtapech, Bim Kaima Sharach Layim Shvucha Bechirayich, At Bais Malucha Via Kise Hloid El, Bech Yoshvu Avodim Ale Chisas Givirayam Yen Mishoite, Bim Kaima Sashaniglo Yim Lachazar Vitsirayich. Yinam lenafshi olech oroim biyochef ale chorvo shema ma shorhoyo dvi raich bim koima roinech asher nignaz 
ובמקום קרובי איך אשר שכנו אחד ואחד אורך אגויס ואשך פאר נזר ואקויב זמן חילל בארץ בבל אס נזירייך איך יערב לי אוכל ושוסס ואיסך הזה כי יסחבו הכלוב ומס כפי רייך אוי איך מאור יוי מהי מוסק לעיני באוי דרא בפי אור ועם פגרי בשורי כויס היה גוינם לעד הרפי מעד כי כבר מולו חסר להם נפשי ממרי רייך איס אזכרו אהלו אשתה חמורך ביאזכרו הליבה ואמצע שמרייך צייה אין כלי לס יופי אבו וכן אוירי למועד ובוך נקשרו נפש נפשי סחבי רייך הם עצמכם לשב עושך וכהכוי ומלשם ומויסך ובוך מלשבר רייך. מי בר שבי שואף עם נגנך ומשטח ומשמים כהים או יאלי נויכך שאו רייך. עד רי עמוי נך אשר גולו מנספז ומהלי גבו לא שוכו גדי רייך. המחזיק ומשולייך ומסעם צמלה לא יצלחס בסנסני שמו רייך שנרו פסרס היה ארכוכה בגודלו ומבל מידם לא סמך ורייך ומי ידם ומשיכייך ויומי נביאייך ויומי לביאייך ושירייך ישנה ויחלו, כל אל קמם לחוסו אלי למחס נכלי אוי למדור ודור נזירייך, יבוא למשה ולהייך, ויאשרי אנוש יבחר ויקרא וישכון מחצי רייך, אשר מחכה ויגיע ויראה אלוהי סוירך, ויבוקו עליו שחור רייך לרויס, ותוי ואספכי רייך לאלוהי בשמחוסך בשובך אלי, ויקד מוסנו רייך. Kino Mem Aleph, Shali Sufa Baish. This will be the last Kino that will explain Barabim. I want to end off with this Kino because this Kino is of a great contemporary significance as well. This Kino mourns the 24 cartloads of Shas and commentaries that were publicly burned in the streets of France in the year 1242. Remember, this was at a time before the advent of the printing press where it could take literally years to publish an edition of Shas or even one volume of Shas. And 24 cartloads of Shas contained in them manuscripts of the Rishonim that would never be printed again. Some have been saying lately that these 24 cartloads of Svarim that were burnt in France were burnt uh, in front of Notre Dame, which recently burned down, and some see that as retribution. It's very questionable if that is where, these, uh, where this episode happened. But certainly the Rebbe Hashem will take revenge. And as David HaMelech says, Yismach Tzadik, Yichaz HaNakam. Part of the reward of a Tzadik is to see the revenge against the enemy. What's also of great note is who this kinah was composed by. This kinah was composed by the Marame Rotenberg. Rabbeinu Meir ben Baruch, one of the last of the Balei Toysus. In fact, the Chidah reveals that if you ever learn Masech de Yuma, the Toysus on Masech de Yuma was composed by the Marame Rotenberg. The Maram was a prolific writer. He wrote over a thousand shuvos. And the Yam Shel Shloima in Gittin writes, there was nobody like the Marame Rotenberg. The Marami Rothenberg was a Talmud of the Arzarua. He was born in 1220. And he was the leader of German Jewry in the end of the 13th century. In the final years of the Maram's life, life became unbearable in Germany under the reign of Rudolf I. He didn't want to lose his Jewish constituents, so he made the following rule. He saw it, it was adversely affecting the economy. He declared the Jews were his personal property. He forbade anyone from leaving Germany. And the Maram attempted to flee with his family. He was recognized by a Jewish apostate at the border of Lombardy. And the emperor imprisoned him in a castle in Einzusheim. An exorbitant ransom was requested for his release. A total of 23,000 talents of silver. And the Maram famously poskined it was forbidden for the Jewish community to redeem him. As the Mishnah says in Gittin, it is prohibited to redeem captives. Yes, sir, Mikadei Dameim. However, his student, the Rush, disagreed with his Rebbe. And the Rush said this does not apply to the God of Hadar. So the Rush raised the requisite sum. It's very interesting. The Rush 
was one of the primary disciples of the Marami Rotenberg, another uh, major disciple of the Marami Rotenberg was the Tashbeitz, Rav Shimshin Bar Tzadok, who wrote a Sefer Tashbeitz and about 590 Piskei Dinim that the Maram taught him in jail. In other words, Maram's Talmidim would visit him in the jail. The Maram died. Now the Rush is scared for his life, so the Rush flees to Spain. The Maram was never freed. Interestingly, the Maram, when he died, they did not release his remains. So there was an Oishar by the name of Alexander Wimfen, who paid for the release with his only request be that he be buried next to the Marami Rotenberg. And today you could go in a cemetery, I believe in Worms, I was there last year, you could see the Maram buried, and right next to him is Alexander Wimfen. But that would be the last time you could see the grave of the Maram, Recently, in the last couple of weeks, Nebuch, the grave of the Maram and Alexander Wimfen was violated by terrorists in Germany. Which, by the way, is the great punishment of the Germans, that in about uh, our cousins, in a few decades or so, will be the predominant uh, citizens in, in the communities of Ashkenaz. But the Rebbe Hashem has his ways. We mentioned that this kinnis mourns the burning of 24 wagon loads of Shas in Paris in 1242. The king of France at the time was Louis IX, known as Saint Louis, known not for his tzitkos, but for his religious zeal, which expressed itself most clearly in the favor he showed Jewish apostates. Nicholas Donin was one, one such Jewish apostate who was especially vicious to his former co-religionists, and he personally caused the a baptism of about 500 Jews in Anjou and Portieres at the threat of death. While the majority of the Jews, 3,000 in all, were murdered al Kiddush Hashem. Nicholas Donin realized what many of us do not realize, and that is the backbone of the Jewish people is Gemara, is the Talmud Bavli. And therefore he made a formal accusation, accusation to the Pope that there were passages in the Talmud that were heretical to Christianity and the, the Pope ordered for the confiscation of all Talmud, uh, sets of Talmud and on March 3rd, 1240, while the Jews were in Shul, all copies of Shas were forcibly confiscated. June 12th, there was a public debate between Nicholas Donin and many of the Rabbanim in Paris. Participating in this debate were some of the Rishonim, Rabbi Chiyo ben Yosef, Rabbi Moshe of Kusi, the Smak, the Talmud would have been burned immediately if not for the Bishop of May of Sens, whose arguments averted the decree for one year. However, at the end of the year, the bishop publicly convulsed in front of the king, and Nicholas convinced the king this was his punishment from God. The Talmud was then condemned to be burned. 1,200 manuscripts of Talmud were confiscated. And you have to understand, among these manuscripts are items of Rishonim that would never be seen again. The burning of Ashas famously occurred on Erev Shabbos, Parshas Chukas. Shibole Haleket, Reb Tzidkiyo ben Avraham Aroyfei writes in Simon Reish Samach Gimel that the Rabbanim in the time wanted to understand why was this tragedy happened and they requested via the heavens. And they received the following three word response, Duh! which is the targum of the opening words of Parshas Chukas, in commemoration of this heavenly communication, many have a custom to fast every Erev Shabbos Rosh Chodesh Chukas. I actually got a, a message this year from someone who heard the Kinnus last year. When you fast on every Erev Rosh Chodesh Chukas, you have to fast until Shabbos are still part of the day. And I said, I didn't say that you have to do this, but somebody did it. Somebody did it. Incredibly, this tragedy was not considered an isolated tragedy. But the Rishonim of the time felt that this was heavenly retribution for the lack of respect they showed the Rambam. Because as we know, many of the G'daylam of France disputed some of the Rambam's writings, reported against the Rambam, and the Rambam's works were burned by the monks of the Dominican order, in uh, 1242 and, and earlier in 1234. Writes of Hillel of Verona, Italy, who was an eyewitness to these events, 
Hashem looked down from heaven and avenged the honor of the Master, the Rambam, whose works, Yad HaChazak and Marnavuchim, were burnt, says Rav Hillel, in that very spot. Says Rav Hillel of Verona, if you want evidence that this was retribution for what happened to the Rambam, here is the proof, here is the evidence the ashes of the Rambam mixed with the ashes of the Shas in the very spot where the, the works of the Rambam were burnt the works of the Shas were burnt so this is Kina Mem Aleph and there's certainly much to speak about all of the Kinos but have Rachmanas on you many are wearing masks so after this uh, Kina we're going to say the final Kina and then we hope this should be the last kinnas we should ever have to recite. Kinnam emalaf shali sufa vayish. Shali sufa vayish is a man vayish. Hamizavim shachayim. Hamizavim shachayim. Hashavim avarazavim. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.